Hello, this is Joe Jasper, and I'm going to try to show you how I came up with this painting-like uh, effect from this photograph, original, uh, taken with a mirrorless camera out a moving train going up to the Jungfrau Lach, uh, to 11,400 feet. This is somewhere between 4,000 and 7,000 uh, and uh, I thought that the image, this is probably the raw, that it is the raw, but uh, it's very flat and uh, obviously not the way my memory <laughs> remembers this. It's a little wonky crooked, so the first thing I did with it was uh, used in Lightroom the crop tool uh, to straighten it a bit and uh, get these trees to stand upright. Uh, the building's a lesser consideration, but uh, at least the central one's got uh, straighter. And I got rid of a little bit at the bottom, including an unusual tree that was sitting here that was uh, like a sore thumb. So I, I did a couple things here. Uh, also adjusted a little bit of the uh, highlights and shadows uh, because I wasn't going to be doing uh, too much photorealism with the painting. I didn't worry about that affecting my denoise too much, but I did go ahead and uh, from Lightroom went into photo, edit in, uh, denoise AI, and I clicked on auto, and then uh, I liked the result, just came right back in, so I didn't have to adjust any sliders. And uh, in came this uh, cleaner version, which I then took into uh, Topaz Studio 2 to come up with this uh, final edit. So it may not look exactly like this when we're done, but I'm going to show you some of the things that happen. So remember, this is kind of flat looking, right? And we want to end up with this sense of receding depth, uh, preserve some of the fog effect, and uh, get a nice painterly effect. How did we do that? Well, uh, let's go back to the edited version here and go to Photo, Edit In, Topaz Studio 2, and I edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. Takes just a sec, and here we are. Then I'm going to add a look, and the look I'm going to go for is uh, a simplify uh, look for those familiar with the old terms, and uh, it was simple sketch. So I clicked on that and said, well, how does that look? And I went through several of them to decide how I was going to prepare for moving into painting, but this one already is a painterly effect. You know, it has texture, it has brush strokes. It's not just a buzz sim type simplify or abstraction. It actually has paint strokes and texture already. So I went ahead and said apply. Uh, what I like about it is that compared to the original, it goes from a very dull look to a very vibrant uh, look and has deep shadows and uh, nice highlights. What I don't like is the color variation is too intense. Uh, it doesn't look natural enough to me. There's somewhere between being uh, too abstract with the brush strokes and uh, realism uh, that I prefer. So I'm going to go into impression by clicking on that word impression that layer, and I can come down and I can turn down the stroke color variation until it's uh, closer to what we had that day. There was a little bit of that uh, leftover hay color uh, from summer. This was shot in mid-September, uh, so somewhere around there looks nice. And then the other thing I'm going to do, let me zoom into 100% to show you the whys and wherefores. Uh, you might see 
these areas of bare canvas in and among the trees. And there's a couple of ways to handle that. One is to uh, increase the coverage and see if that does it. And that does quite a bit. Uh, we'll turn down the transition. Um, but there's still some bare spots. I can increase the paint opacity, which I'm probably going to be doing anyway, but let's uh, do the simple trick, which is under texture. So use the carrot to expand it and then drag down until you get down here where it says background type. Solid canvas where the bare spots are, or do I want the original colors of the photo to show through, which I'm going to choose. So I choose original, and now all those bare spots go away. All right, soon we're going to have healing brushes to get really little bright highlights like that, which I missed when I was doing my Lightroom thing. Now the other thing I can say is, gee, is my texture too much as long as I'm in this texture part? Maybe I want to tone that down by taking the te texture strength down and see and that looks better to me. Some texture is nice. It's kind of like adding grain. Uh, it smooths out. Uh, I mean, it takes out some of the too smooth spots uh, from processing. Now, uh, the other thing I'm going to look at, I can say gee, do I like these medium amounts of brush strokes, my brush size, and all that. So those are all options you can have. If we turn it on high brush strokes, we get a little more detail. But I kind of liked it where it was. Here's the low. And uh, you get a much rougher treatment of the trees in the background. And yet it's preserving the, the subject in the center. So... <clears throat> uh, I think we'll go back to the medium. Maybe give a little more paint volume. And a touch more paint opacity to bring those brush strokes to look more real. Uh, I'm not too crazy about these uh, outlining looks, and that comes from spill. So we come down to spill and maybe turn that down a bit too and see how it does. Yeah, that's much less prominent. Uh, sometimes if you have just one area that looks too different from what you want, you can add a second layer of impression uh, that doesn't uh, mask uh, or treat the, treat the areas differently and just use masks to adjust. But this is pretty close to what we're going to want, and I don't want to belabor this too much. What I do not like is how rough the sky looks. The fog effect is there, but kind of getting lost. So what I'm going to do is add a mask. So we can add a mask. The mask appears. And we bring in a gradient. And I'm going to leave the edge where on. I can increase it more if I want to try to preserve as much of these little trees in a painterly effect like that. And uh, now that's smoothed out this uh, fog uh, from about here up entirely not quite as well down in here and these trees may be a little too rough for me also um, <clears throat> but what i can do uh, also is bring some of that paint stroke back by decreasing transparency into this area and then worry about these other areas separately so now i got just a little bit of paint stroke from here up and I'm going to click on brush to set that. And then I can take my brush and use that same opacity to soften the fog effect here. If it's too much, 
I can lighten the brush to like a medium gray. And the same thing with these trees here, but I'm going to probably bring it way down so that most of the effect is there. Let's see how that does. I think I like that a little better. Maybe a little darker. Same thing here. And then uh, I think I'm going to click Adjust, feather the effect so that these areas blend in the mask blend together a little smoother and hopefully keep it from being too obvious that there's a change line in the mask. And that's looking pretty nice. I'm going to look also at the basic adjustment and say, gee, is this too dark? And if we look at the histogram, it's certainly slammed up against that uh, left side. So uh, whoever set up this preset did have the exposure at minus 23. Let's bring it up a bit. That's pretty nice. And um, the black level is still a bit blown, and that's okay. You just have to decide where you want that black level. I think around there and then maybe bring my shadows down a little bit, but I'm going to show you how I played with the shadows separately. Same thing with the highlights, play with them separately. So once we're there, uh, I'm going to say, okay, I'm done with that. Let's take a look at the before and after. I guess we'll click on original. The space bar is not working now for some reason. So there's the original, very flat looking very dull, and then the uh, new version, very vibrant and uh, has more depth to it. But we're going to make that even better. First thing I want to do is give a little bit more warmth to the color. So I'm going to take a uh, color overlay and I'm going to apply sort of a copper to it. And I actually have that saved in my preset so you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> And this is going to be too much. I, this was not a bright, sunny day. So, so I want to tone that down. But it is a copper color that I uh, chose. You know, you just click in here and then you can choose whatever color you want and how bright you want it. Uh, so I like this, this one. Here's the values if you want to copy it for yourself. Here's the HTML color code. You got all that. And uh, in overlay blend mode, and I'm just going to turn that down to uh, where I, I want it. Just maybe a touch. And so to see the before and after, I'm going to click on the eyeball. That's the before. Everything's kind of blue-green. And by doing just a touch, it's warming it up I like that. Plus, I'm going to be adding some cool shadows next. So I'm going to go to Add Filter again, Color Overlay. And this time, uh, I'm going to choose a periwinkle color. <clears throat> Apply that. And here's my periwinkle color for those of you who wish to copy. But create your own. What color do you want your shadows to be? And again, I'm using overlay. You can try different ones like multiply, color burn, um, color, soft light. And then what I'm going to do is apply a mask using Luma. And this is basically creating a luminosity mask. And whatever I want to be is somewhere around 20 or so. I'm going to look at my mask down in this uh, little window here and say what's turning black is <clears throat> where I want those shadows to be. But 
G may be too much, so I'm going to bring the range down to maybe about 15. And uh, just about like that. Now, that right now, this is opposite of what I want. And I probably could have played at the other end, but this is the way I tend to do it. I'm going to then lock that in by pressing the brush so that I don't have some weirdo error happen. And then I'm going to invert it. So you click the little uh, drop-down hamburger menu, which is just represented by three dots here, and go down to invert and click that. And now you can see that the bright areas are black, masking this periwinkle effect from there. But in all these shadow areas, I now have this periwinkle color. So if I want to dial that in, I can come down and show you this is without any of the periwinkle and my shadows are just a little too light and too warm for me. And by bringing up gradually, I can see where I want to stop. And uh, usually it's somewhere le less than 18. Uh, <clears throat> 10 to 18 is kind of a good range most of the time, but that's not a hard rule. So now we've dealt with shadows. Uh, how about adding some highlights? So again, another color overlay. And this time I'm going to choose... Uh, uh, most often I'm, I'm choosing this kind of color range, something peachy to warm. Uh, but I know from experience that in this situation, I want something closer to the blues. Um, maybe something like that. Again, I'm going to go to Overlay and create a mask. You can see that made everything bright, and uh, we don't want that. So we're going to go to Luma again. And uh, I'm going to watch my range here. And what I'm looking for is for these bright spots on the hills and the tops of the trees to be black. So again, I'm creating a, a luminosity mask. But I want some areas of these hills to be lighter. Perhaps something like that. <coughs> and then again, I usually click on the brush before I go to invert. And that's too bright for me. This is going to be probably down closer to 10 or less. And to show you the before and after. <coughs> Oops, excuse me. Click on the eyeball. That's before the highlight. This is after the highlight. Probably could have put a little more uh, shadows into here, but what I can do instead is add a gradient of black. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, here's what I'm seeing. is I'm seeing from here to here looks very flat. Whereas it's a hillside that's receding, and I'd like to capture that back. So I go again to a color overlay. And this time I'm going to choose just black. You can choose sometimes something warmer or cooler if you wish. And I'm going to go to overlay again. Probably my more common choice. Now, right now, this is affecting the entire image, which I don't want, and this is still flat from here to here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use Gradient Mask. And you can see right now it's black up here and white down here, so that means this is completely uh, showing through, and this is completely blocked by my mask. What I want to do is bring that down maybe around the top of that building 
and bring this down to the, the very bottom. And I can decide, do I want Edgeware on or off? And usually I, I just take it off like this. And I'm going to click on the brush to kind of fix it in place. And now I have a more intense uh, and darker foreground receding into lightness up here. And that gives me a sense of depth, but it's too strong. So I'm just going to take that down. That looks pretty good. So that's how I got to this point. And then, of course, adding in my signature. But there you go. Uh, that's taking the image from flat and kind of nondescript uh, pastoral Swiss Alps scene to a Zowie. Uh, of course, this is to my taste, and you may have other ideas for how you would handle the same image. Thank you for watching.